For those of you who are reveling a bit uh, in the SEC's troubles during the postseason play just a few weeks ago, well, you don't have a whole lot of time to continue your revelry. The SEC looks to dominate another recruiting season with National Signing Day coming up in less than two weeks. We bring in Brittany Taylor Newman to uh, give us some context uh, with some of the top players in the nation still looking for a home, still trying to make their final commitments. Brittany, uh, thanks so much for joining us. So let's let's run down some of those players because as I look at the recruiting board, it's pretty much once again dominated by the SEC with, according to ESPN, nine of the top 16 uh, uh, schools in the country coming from the Southeastern Conference. Uh, let's break it down to individuals and some of those five-star guys that are still out there. Yeah, there's still some good names to be had. Um, when you're talking recruiting, obviously the name that's kind of on everybody's lips right now is that of Brian Cowart. Um, he's ranked the number one player right now on ESPN's top 300 list, um, number three for 247sports.com. Um, he's a five-star defensive end out of Armwood High School. Um, and he's kind of indicated that Auburn, Florida, and Perhaps Florida State might be in the running, although I think we're leaning at this point Auburn or Florida. He was in Gainesville over the weekend, unfortunately had to cut his visit short a little bit early. He was only on campus a few hours, and then his mother was called into work back in Tampa, so they had to leave. Um, his family did develop a pretty strong relationship with a couple of Florida coaches at the beginning of his recruitment, and that may be the reason, the only reason that Florida State still has a little bit of a chance um, was Jimbo Fisher's recent hire a former Florida defensive end coach, Brad Line. Um, his mother, uh, Mrs. Cowart, had developed an especially close relationship with Coach Line. So if there's a chance for Florida State to pick him up, it would simply be because of the addition of Coach Line here recently. Um, she also developed a very close relationship with former Florida head coach, Will Muschamp, who, as we know, is now at Auburn. So I'm thinking that most likely he's probably going to end up going to Auburn. He's had positive things to say about the school, um, and I think that, you know, mothers always have a little bit of sway, and she definitely loves Muschamp, so. <laughs> Brittany, I have a feeling that this Florida-Auburn connection is going to pop up a few times here during the discussion. They're geographically extremely close. You mentioned the Will Muschamp factor, leaving Florida, going to Auburn as defensive coordinator. And uh, they fight uh, for SEC players. And Auburn in a good position right now, across the board, ranked 11th by the three major services when looking at ESPN, 24-7 uh, Composite, and also Rivals.com. Florida, if you're looking down a list and you're trying to run through the SEC, you just got to keep going and going and going and going until you find Florida. Now, we've done a video to kind of explain the context of that, but when you consider ESPN doesn't have them ranked, Florida's at 102 according to Rivals and number 81. It's really not typical Gator territory when you come to recruiting, but the, the situation is not quite that... Um, of a catastrophe at Florida. They only have nine commits right now. They've got some other guys that are sitting there, and they will just shoot up the recruiting rankings as we get close to National Signing Day. So set us up for your number two guy that's uh, being looked at uh, by the SEC. Uh, well, the number two name to watch is that of Terry Beckner, Jr. Um, he's ranked number two on ESPN's top 300 list, number 13 for 247sports.com, um, a five-star recruit as well, a defensive tackle out of East St. Louis High School. Um, and there's four schools that are still in the hunt uh, for Buckner, Beckner, excuse me, um, and that would be Ohio State, Mizzou, Auburn, and Florida State. Um, he's already had his official visit to Tallahassee back in November, um, was in Ohio State, at Ohio State last weekend for their national championship celebration, which I'm sure was impressive. Um, he's got a, a visit scheduled to Mizzou this weekend, his last visit which has a little bit of a home field advantage in that Mizzou, the campus is just a couple of hours away from St. Louis, but reports from some of the assistant coaches at East St. Louis High School say that he was absolutely blown away by his visit to Auburn, came back super excited, absolutely loved it. So from the rumblings that we're hearing, it looks like perhaps Auburn has a little bit of an edge there. 
Yeah, we know who has the great facilities. Of course, we know who's winning the championships and winning the big games, and, and we also know the facilities. But we don't always know those intangibles, whether it's a proximity to home or it's a certain feel or a certain connection that they make with a coach. And so sometimes uh, we get a bit of a surprise on National Signing Day where a kid will, will leapfrog a couple just powerhouse programs and jump somewhere else, and that's always an interesting factor in this. Uh, also looking at the recruiting rankings, it's amazing. I mentioned nine of the top 16 as it stands right now coming from the SEC. Tennessee, we would expect possibly here in 2015 to make a statement on the field that reflects the recruiting that they've done over the past three years. Tennessee in the top five across the board. Georgia in the top six. Texas A&M in the top nine across the board. And of course, Alabama has that number one spot locked up. So take us through uh, a couple more players as, as we try to try to figure out where these guys are headed. Well, one that I'm particularly excited about um, is a player from right here in my hometown of Orlando, Florida, and that would be Martez Ivy, who plays for Apopka High School here. He's a five-star offensive tackle, um, number five on ESPN's Power 300 list, number two for 247sports.com. Um, we're very, very proud of him here. He's uh, had visits to LSU, Auburn, and Florida. LSU doesn't really look to be in the running at this point. It looks like it will either be Auburn or Florida. Um, he did grow up a Gator fan, so I can certainly understand why he would be leaning that way, and the proximity to home, as you just you know, mentioned, sometimes that, that plays into it for players, certainly for their families. Um, but he was another player who had an especially close relationship with head coach Will Muschamp while he was at Florida, who's obviously now at Auburn. Another note there is that his former Apopka High School teammate and best friend Chandler Cox is an early enrollee at Auburn. He's been very active on Twitter trying to recruit his best friend to come play with him at Auburn. I'm sure he's been just as active behind the scenes. So it may be those two Tiger tie-ins that end up being the difference maker for Martez Ivy. Um, two more names that you probably want to keep an eye on. I think this is really interesting. CC Jefferson, he's a five-star defensive end, number nine on ESPN's Power 300 list, number seven for 247sports.com, um, has made an announcement that he and four-star um, linebacker Jeffrey Holland, in conjunction with our number one player we talked about, Brian Byron Cowart, are going to be sold as a package deal. They're saying that whatever school takes them has to take all three. They're going to go together. They said it's the only way you can really make a difference on the field is when you assemble a group of like-minded guys. Um, they just decided this during their official visit to Auburn. They were all there together, so they put it out there. It's on Twitter for coaches to see. Um, the three schools that are in the hunt for the for all three of those players are Ole Miss, Auburn, and Florida. We already know what Brian Cowart has said. He said he's leaning Auburn or Florida. So. We'll see. The, it's interesting, C.C. Jefferson and Jeffrey Holland posted an Instagram video over the weekend. They were with Ole Miss head coach Hugh Freeze rapping. Um, so they, we'll see if the Holy Alliance, the Holy Trinity can stay together or if, if this band of brothers may end up broken up um, once we get to National Signing Day. All three plan to announce on Signing Day, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. These coaches recently have kind of caught on to what they need to do to connect with the, the younger players, and so we see some, some, some pretty um, comedic moments come out of those where these guys try to rap, they get tattoos, they do all sorts of things that they need to do to try to connect uh, with these kids. And I, and I love the package deal concept. We most famously saw it a few years ago at Ole Miss, and that brought in quite a quite a haul for Hugh Freeze when you talk about uh, Laramie Tunsil and Laquan Treadwell, and and they had kind of a, a deal going as well with three or four of those Rebels that uh, made that top five recruiting class for Ole Miss. It, it would seem to me to be pretty obvious, I hate to be Mr. Obvious here, that uh, while this is all crucial for everybody in the SEC, Florida, it's just extremely crucial that they bring in some more of these players. They've got nine commits right now. Everybody else in the SEC is plus 18, most of them in the mid-20s. And, um, again, the recruiting rankings and, and based on their position in the field, losing five and six games the last few years, uh, Florida really needs to gain some of these top guys. And if they could wrestle a couple of these away from Auburn and uh, Ole Miss, uh, that would be great for the Gators. Uh, Brittany, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate the rundown on recruiting. It's something that I try to keep up with, but in no way can I, so I, I need to pull in some people like you to give me some perspective. 
Well, you know, we're proud of recruiting here in the Sunshine State. We uh, we get very into it because we tend to send a lot of players out to to our schools here and to schools, you know, around the southeast and uh, the Midwest. So we we definitely get into it here in Florida. It is pretty amazing when you look at the numbers from Florida. It is incredible. I know that uh, in particular, I had a Miami guy on who basically said that if Miami signed all the four- and five-star guys just in the area within, I don't know, it was like 75 miles, something like that. They, they don't have enough, they don't have enough uh, scholarships to give all those guys, so they have to let a lot of them go. So <laughs> they're, they're pretty much there for the taking all across the state of Florida. It's, it's, it's very amazing, uh, the talent that's produced down there. All right, Brittany, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on.